Today, my administration is taking several steps to stiffen enforcement for those who try to come without a legal right to stay and to put in place a faster process, I emphasize a faster process, to decide a claim of asylum. Someone says, I'm coming because I'm escaping oppression. Well, there's got to be a way to determine that much quicker. On their cell phone, call CBP1. The way this parole program works, one must have a lawful sponsor here in the United States who agrees to sponsor you to get here. Then, that person has to go undergo rigorous background checks and apply from outside the United States and not cross the border illegally in the meantime. If they apply and their application is approved, they can use the same app, the CBP-1 app, to present at a port of entry and be able to work in the United States legally for two years. That's the process. But if their application is denied, or if they attempt to cross into the United States unlawfully, they'll be returned back to Mexico and will not be eligible for this program after that. Lawful sponsor here in the United States who agrees to sponsor you to get here. This new process is orderly, it's safe, and it's humane. And it works. Since we created the new program, the number of Venezuelans trying to enter America without going through a legal process has dropped dramatically from about 1,100 per day to less than 250 per day. They're not going to have an opportunity to deal with the program. This new process is orderly. My message is this. If you're trying to leave Cuba, Nicaragua, or Haiti, you have, and we, or have agreed to begin a journey to America, do not. Do not just show up at the border. Stay where you are and apply legally from there. Starting today, if you don't apply through the legal process, you will not be eligible for this new parole program. This is the nations in North Central America, so people here can there. And next week, I'm going to travel to Mexico, where I'm going to meet with President Lopez Obrador. We have a big agenda that ranges from the climate crisis to economic development and other issues. But one important part of that agenda is strengthening our border between our nations. And I will visit the border myself this Sunday in El Paso to assess border enforcement operations, meet with the local officials and community leaders, and the folks at the border sending me what they need that they don't have, and make it public what they conclude they need they don't have to try to convince my Republican colleagues they should do something. When it comes to immigration, it seems like it's a better issue. A better issue. Look, we need, me re we need more resources to secure the border. Yet again, extreme Republicans have said no. Many Republicans agree we should do something. But it's time to stop listening to their inflammatory talk. It's time to look at their record. Great, uh, great story. Attention. Attention. <laughs> <laughs>